VoiceThread is what I am going to talk about. And for me, VoiceThread, the inspiration of VoiceThread, uh, what it is, is a cloud-based tool that permits asynchronous online interaction um, using video, audio, um, text-based, um, pre-recorded things. Uh, so I'll show you that in a few minutes. But w at my prior institution, I was tasked with taking one of our core doctoral seminars on learning theory, uh, which had been forever a face-to-face -face course, and turning it into an entirely online course. And um, I was desperate to find a way for a doctoral seminar to happen well online. And you know, the core of a doc seminar is interaction. The core of a doc seminar is for the doc students to um, you know, internalize stuff that we're talking about and, and the information and the knowledge and, and to share it with, with other folks um, who are also doc students. So um, at that point in time, uh, online courses didn't really facilitate that kind of interaction very well. So I was looking for a way to, to have asynchronous interaction. Um, and VoiceThread was something that my prior institution had available and somebody said, why don't you give it a shot? And I liked it a lot. And over the years, they've made improvements. Um, it offers accessibility options now um, uh, for folks who, who, who uh, um, you know, may have hearing issues or sight issues. Um, so it works pretty well as a tool. All right, so uh, VoiceThread can be used from any computer using any web browser, but it works best with Firefox or Chrome. Um, it has a great um, mobile app that when, when students do have um, accessibility issues, accessibility meaning no access to the internet on their computer or something like that, their cell phones tend to work. So this is a tool that is useful. I found it to be very useful in Idaho. Um, with Idaho students, because when, when students don't have access to one kind of technology, VoiceThread lets them uh, use another kind of, of technology to, to access this. So there are very few excuses for students to avoid engaging the, the technology. Um, so some other things here that really aren't that important to, to look at. Let me show you, so that's VoiceThread itself. Let me show you what it looks like on, uh, in, in real life. So here is uh, a voice thread, let me expand my, if I can. There we go. So that is what voice thread looks like. And uh, this was me just giving feedback to my students. And you can see the title of it there is uh, Davin's week four thoughts. And you can see over here that students can respond. I'm not gonna hover over or show you their responses because it'll show their names. Um, but I've got uh, four students who responded to, to this, which is fine. I would have preferred more, but that's okay. Um, this particular thing wasn't a requirement for them to, to watch me do. So you see that it gives how long, um, it shows how long my students' responses were. Um, and this is how someone would respond to my video. So to watch it, they would press play and it would play. Um, Good evening, everybody. It's Sunday, the 15th of September, about 6 p.m. So there we go. That's that. Students would watch that. And then you hit this and you can respond to this video or whatever someone uploads. They can upload a PowerPoint presentation. They can upload um, just one slide. They can upload a video, a pre-recorded video um, that they took on their phone. And so this is a text-based response. I've never used this, so I guess, yeah, so you can call in on your phone and, and do a response that way. That's new to me, I I'd never done that before. Uh, just an audio response. This would record your response. And what does this do? I actually don't know what, the, what that one does. I see, so that one is to upload a, upload a comment that you've got already saved on your computer. So you can see how it offers um, just a different way for folks to, to interact asynchronously. And I've found it to be, to be pretty useful. I'll show you how I use it 
in one of my courses. And um, there are complicated ways to use this, you know, pretty sophisticated ways to use this. But what I'm going to show you is a fairly simple way. So here's week three in, in my um, adult learning course. And so they read, they look through these questions, and then I've got a voice thread prompt that instead of a text-based discussion um, where they type in responses um, to, to a question or series of questions, I have them do two minute, uh, two minute or less videos. Here's, here's the question. In two minutes or less, tell us what you think the purpose of adult education is or should be, which of our assigned readings or videos helped inform your thoughts the most. And the reason to limit it to two minutes or less is um, when I didn't do that, I would have students who would talk for 10 minutes and it's really difficult for other students to get on and uh, to listen and respond to that when, when it's a 10 minute you know, response to that question. So I, I tend to limit all of the voice thread prompts like this to three minutes or two minutes or less. All right, so. When you're setting up, you see how, as I set it up here, it's got that VT symbol. That means that it was done through voice thread. So in tools over here, scroll down, it's right there, voice thread external tool.